Who asked for this? Bubsy. What can I say about this Bobcat that hasn't been said before? He was the star of many dubious games that none of them were stellar, and he even had his own failed cartoon pilot! But despite his mediocrity, someone actually decided to bring him back last year. Seriously, who asked for a Bubsy revival? I wanna find that person and slap him in the face. The memes cannot be that good that we actually have the- I'm holding this in my hand! How is this real? Okay, granted, the game is not god-awful, but why would you charge 30 bucks for a game you can finish in an hour? So here I am, pretty much against my will, having to talk about Bubsy of all characters. But you're probably wondering yourself, why am I not covering the first game in the series? Well, it's mostly because a lot of people already have, and there's not much for me to say, but for the sake of argument, let's talk a little bit about it just so we can get the ground rolling. Bubsy 1 is an utter mess. Movement is too fast for its own good since it comes in the price of control, and the fact that Bubsy dies in one single hit is also criminal, considering that a lot of the enemies appear off-screen and death feels rather cheap. If it wasn't for the surprisingly decent soundtrack, I would have regarded this game as one of the worst I've ever played. Now that we got that out of the way, let's finally talk about Bubsy 2. I found it incredibly interesting that Michael Berlin, the original creator of the character, who had nothing to do with the development of this game, said that Bubsy 2 was the game that ruined the franchise. I want to reiterate this. Not this game or that game. Bubsy 2 caused the death of Bubsy. I would actually feel bad if the franchise was alive to begin with. The story of Bubsy 2 is actually told via a colorful comic book, which that alone is pretty cool. A new villain has emerged by the name of Oinker P. Ham, who wishes to steal the entire history of the world. It's up to Bubsy to venture into the Amazitorium and thwart his evil plans. And this time he got the greatest weapon of all. A Nerf gun! Trademark. So yeah, this story is nothing to write home about, but I will give accolade credit, it's very cool there is a little comedy that explains the plot of the game, and it's actually well drawn. It's probably the best part about this game. Which is incredibly sad. Bubsy 2's levels are divided into two wings, and each wing is divided into three floors with five levels each. I like the idea that you have two different paths to choose from, but at the end of the day the ending stays the same no matter what. At least you can choose the order in which you play the levels, but each floor is comprised of the exact same five, so the adventure becomes redundant rather quickly. Bubsy 2's control are similar to the predecessor as Bubsy is able to jump and glide. But I still have no idea why the gliding function is assigned to a different button. Using the same button to both jump and glide worked pretty well for Knuckles, but you get used to it pretty fast, and honestly, there's something rather cathartic about bouncing on multiple enemies. I will give Accolade some credit, Bubsy 2 does control much better than Bubsy 1, but it really doesn't say much. He doesn't feel like he has any kind of weight, and sometimes when you run really fast towards a wall, you jump for some reason. When you run very fast, the camera shifts direction to when you're running towards, but when you stop, it just snaps quickly to the center. Now, I don't mind when things are moving fast, I love Sonic the Hedgehog after all, but the camera movement is so jarring it gave me a huge headache, and trust me, you're probably gonna feel the same thing too. But one of the best things about Bubsy 2 is the fact that now you get multiple hits! Yay! Your health is indicated by Bubsy's face. It goes from smug and happy to... basically the face that I make when I play this game. But even if you can collect health via bandages throughout the world, it still doesn't change the fact that there are many death traps that will get you in just one single hit. Especially those random skyhooks, why are those one hit kills? Can someone explain this to me? At least it beats dying from something you couldn't see! Gee! 
Thanks! Oh, yeah, I haven't used that in a long time. I will say that the one thing that did kind of make me chuckle is the fact that the death trap in the music levels are pits that are filled with sharp notes. Get it? Sharp notes? Ha! <laughs> Good job, Accolade. That's like one funny joke in like a thousand that don't even hit the mark. I think this will be a perfect time to talk about some of the enemies in this game. Sure, it makes sense to bounce on instruments in the music level or mummies in Egypt. But then you also get pigs with business suits that can walk on ceilings. And this pig lady that looks suspiciously like Lois from Family Guy. Everything seems to just lack cohesion as enemies are just plastered all over the map. And in general, the game just feels like a cluttered mess. Now, all Blabler would actually have to go to excruciating amount of detail to explain every level, but honestly, because the levels are so boring and there are very little gimmicks or interesting mechanics to them, there isn't really much to say. All you really have to do is just find the glowing orb at the end of the level and that's it. I guess I could say that the medieval levels are more linear, whereas the Egyptian levels are more labyrinthy. But even on the later levels, the game's formula doesn't change a whole lot, so the whole experience becomes stale. Okay, fine, I do like the space levels a little bit just because of the low gravity so you can jump higher. And flying in your little spaceship can be kind of fun. Though speaking of the spaceship, by far the most consistent gameplay mechanic in this game are the plane levels. You can either shoot forward or downwards and the goal is to find the exit. Very simple and there's really nothing much to it which is probably the best thing I can say about the entire gameplay. It's functional. If there is one thing I love about retro games is bonus stages. You know, those secret areas that contain so many amazing goodies to collect. Bubsy 2 has them as well. But in this game, I actually dread them. The bonus levels in Bubsy 2 are hidden behind doors, and while they're pretty easy to reach, they actually get in the way. Bonus room doors and regular doors don't look any different, and because of that, sometimes when I just want to continue in the level, I have to sit through another tedious bonus stage. The first bonus level features Arnold the Armadillo, as he's trying to navigate the inner turbines of a truck in order to escape. You don't control Arnold, but actually fans inside the truck that can move him over. My only real gripe is the fact that sometimes it's hard to control the power of the propellers, so you kind of flung all over the place, but at least this bonus stage is short and simple and doesn't overstay its welcome. But if you fail this minigame by using any of the two side exits, our rolling marsupial gets run over by this truck. <laughs> this character doesn't want anything to do with this game and yet he gets the most abuse. You're my favorite character, little guy. The second minigame is the Frog Launcher, and the goal is pretty simple. Use a moving frog catapult to launch a frog on a variety of targets to earn lives. And it's also pretty neat that you can control the trajectory of your frog's fall while it's in mid-air. However, you only get an extra life when you hit 5 targets. Let me present you a very small example. There are 13 targets, and if you do your math correctly, that number does not divide into 5. So therefore, I can only get two extra lives, and the last three targets, well... You get absolutely nothing. In general, I just dread every single time I go to this stage because it feels so slow. The time it takes to crank up the lever, the time it takes to launch a frog... It just becomes a tedious exercise in patience because you have to wait for the timer to go down, especially when you have no more necessary targets to hit. As I mentioned earlier, Bubsy 2 actually features a nerf gun as an actual item in this game. And I'm not sure if Nerf ever regretted this partnership, but I do admit it is kind of a cool idea in theory, but like everything in this game, it just falls flat. In order to use the Nerf gun, you have to scroll to the Nerf gun icon, and then you can use it. It's easy on the Super Nintendo, but on the Genesis, you have to stop in place, press down and then the item button in order to scroll through your entire inventory. But I can let that slide since the button limitation on the Sega Genesis controller can't be helped. But what could have been helped is the fact that there is a giant delay to when you press the button and when you actually fire a shot. It makes the actual act of shooting incredibly clunky and that's why I rarely use this in the game. The only practical way of using this gun is by shooting it mid-air since it's much more immediate, but on the other hand it's much tougher to aim. 
The next item is the diving suit, and trust me, you don't want to use that because your jumping alongside with your movement becomes much worse. So why actually use it? Well, in the Egypt levels, you can go underwater and play a mini game. That's it. You just collect all the bubbles and try to avoid a tornado that would take you back up. You don't even get a one-up for collecting everything, it's just for points! Seriously? The best item in the game is by far the Smart Bomb. <laughs> get it? Because <laughs> it has a graduation cap on it. Okay, fine, this joke is actually decent, so that makes it what? Two out of a thousand jokes that actually work? Congratulations, Accolade! You're moving up in the world! The bomb is a screen nuke that destroys all enemies on screen with the wimpiest sound I've ever heard. Every explosion from now on should make that sound. That's a rule. Lastly, we have the black hole. And all it does is let Bubsy exit the level. No, nope, really? That's it? That's it? All you do is exit the level! Isn't it simpler to just press a button at the pause menu to go back to the hub world? There isn't even a point of doing it because you have to finish every single level to get to the end of the game. And the only way you can access the store is to actually finish a level. Oh yeah, this game actually has a store. Throughout the levels there are orange cards that you can collect and use them as currency in the store to buy items or even better, extra lives. Also, for some unbeknownst reason, you can actually sell your items in the Super Nintendo version only, and that means that all those useless diving suits and black holes will finally come into use by purchasing extra lives. Not to mention that items are actually cheaper in the Super Nintendo version, and I really don't get why. After finishing five levels in a hub world, you can finally face the boss. And what is it, you ask? Well... Uh... You just fight the enemies, popping in and out of tiles and shooting projectiles. <sighs> as terrible as Bubsy 1 is, at least it had original bosses. Awful ones, but original. And not only you have to do this once, but even after you finish this second hub world, you do this crap AGAIN! They even tease you with the fact that the name of the boss level is different as well as the music, but it's the same exact crap! At least the final boss is better, but it's not all that great to begin with, so let's just move on. I did harp on the Genesis version for not being able to switch items easily, nor sell back items to the store, but at the end of the day, it actually does a better job in the presentation department. Both versions look identical, but it's shocking how the Super Nintendo version has a far choppier frame rate. And while I do like the colors on the Super Nintendo, I do think they look more saturated than the organic look of the Sega Genesis version. But okay, I've been delaying this long enough. I think now it's the perfect time to finally talk about the sound department. Is that what you want to say about Bubsy 1? At least that game had a decent soundtrack, and it's pretty much the reason why I've been using tracks from that game this whole time. Bubsy 2's pathetic excuse for a soundtrack is a cacophony of random noises masquerading as music. It feels like every time you make a step, the music cuts off to a different 20 second loop. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed from all the footage I put in this video, but uh, this game actually has a music level. How does a game that features a music level have such terrible music in it? This is an actual crime! And if you still don't believe me, have a listen. <laughs> Also, the music in the Genesis version is clearer than the Super Nintendo one, but really, who cares? I would also be remiss for not talking about Bubsy's voice, and this makes me incredibly sad because... I adore Rob Paulson, he's one of the best voice actors of our generation, but I cannot stand Bubsy's voice! The high-pitched, shrill sounds that he makes when he just spouts quips and terrible jokes, I just can't stand it! And even Mr. Paulson himself said in an interview that Bubsy is one of the worst roles he's had in his entire career. Oh my god, Bubsy the Bobcat? <laughs> the best thing about that show is that the check's cleared. <laughs> <laughs> 
if I get any souls in this, is the fact I can have a passive-aggressive remark to each of this bugger's quips. Do you believe in miracles? Obviously not. I'm playing this game. Nothing can stop me now. Shh. I just stopped you. Another swine neck. Just like this game! <laughs> Shockingly, Bubsy 2 actually has a two-player mode. Which means I actually had to ask one of my friends to play this with. Which probably explain why I don't have any friends anymore. It works on the alternating method, where one player loses a life, the other's turn begins. However, there are actually two different modes, friends or feisty, in which the player who isn't playing as Bubsy gets to control one of his nephews. If you play the friends mode, you can shoot enemies to help Bubsy out, but in the feisty mode, you drop banana peels to make him slip. Not only is this game frustrating by design from the get-go, but adding an additional player just to trip you over makes this already annoying experience all the more excruciating. Not to mention it's incredibly distracting seeing the flying sprite of Bubsy Nephew just going all over the place. It's like one of my terrible edits. Okay, is there anything else? I think I covered everything. <sighs> okay, let's go to the final cut about time. On the positive side, I guess I kind of like bouncing on enemies and the plane levels are okay. On the negative side, controls can be slippery, enemies are relentless, bonus stages are boring, item usage is downright clunky, the soundtrack is one of the worst I've ever had to listen to, Bubsy himself and his jokes are just downright cringy, the quote-unquote boss battles are absolute disgrace, the two-player mode is broken, and yeah, in general, not very good. Not very good at all. While it is a marginal improvement over the original, Bubsy 2 is still a mess. Just because you have extra hits doesn't warrant a medal, it just means that you met the minimum requirements to become a game, whereas the first one didn't even leave the starting line. And the worst part is that besides the reboot, this is the best Bubsy game ever made! I just don't get this franchise! So I went around and asked a bunch of people a very simple question. What could possibly go wrong? Everything can go wrong. Everything can go wrong. Everything can go wrong. Everything can go wrong! Everything. So everything can go wrong. Everything! Everything can go wrong! Bubsy's alright, I guess. Everything can go wrong. 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 Bubsy 2 sucks. Everything can go wrong. Literally everything. Everything can go wrong. It's not as bad as Bubsy 3D though. Don't even think about it. Before the end of this video, I want to give a major shout out to all the people who agreed to show up in my stupid Bubsy video. And those include In Order, Navid, Austin Eruption, My Life in Gaming, Little Karibo, Balrog, Takahata101 and Lani Pator from Team 4 Star, and Dude, Console Wars, Game Dave, Some Call Me Johnny, not not me, him, Mother's Basement, Rerez, Arlo, and Cat Icarus. I'm very sorry that it took me this long to release all those cameos, but better late than never, I guess. At the very least, check those people out, they're pretty cool. To everyone else, thank you very much for taking the time and watching my video, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, while you do that, can you hit that bell too? Apparently YouTube doesn't like to let people know that I upload, so it'll be nice if you do that. Until the next time you see me, I wish you all a great day, and as always, take care.